Hello everybody, my name is Ace Space. I'm going to do some more testing in the Vagabond for T4 Firestorm. This is a fit I made that is very cheap. You see here, two, 200 million isk. And it has been able to previously successfully do T4 Firestorm, which is a lot of isk you're going to be able to get. It is pretty difficult, you need to have good skills and you also need to be pretty good with piloting, but it has definitely been possible before. I want to see if it still is possible or if uh, I'm going to encounter some pretty difficult waves. Previously, when we tried using this, I actually died, not to the NPCs, but to Gankers. So this is actually, uh, I think this has a lot of potential of being a very cheap T4 Firestorm fit. And I think it's pretty um, funny because I have actually got a Zealot fit that I'm using for T4 Firestorm that goes for 1.4 billion isk. Meanwhile, this one has 200 million isk. So I think this is really pushing it how good you can get of a ship to do the T4 Firestorm. And these are just so great because they're so cheap as well. So if we go here in the the raging firestorm, wow, look how cheap these filaments are! Like really cheap, cheap filaments. Let's go for firestorm. We can go for one of these. Uh, the whole concept here is that we've got ancillary shield boosters. These are really powerful shield boosters, but the downside is that they require these cap charges. So if you're going to use this fit, make sure that you have your inventory fully stocked up with cap charges. So when you buy it, you'll not have enough uh, fit to fit everything in here. Make sure you put some cap charges in the shield boosters. Also load your auto cannons with uh, ammo and then put every single remaining M3 fill it up with these cap boosters because that's going to make it so that you can have as much possible shield boosting as you can get out of this fit. I've uh, got 10 MN here. But I mean, this is focused purely on being as economical as possible. We're going uh, very tech to you see everything. Uh, it, the only thing that is that got a bit of bling is this one here. This Gist X-Type because this is going to provide thermal resist. And it is very important in the Firestorm site to have good thermal resist. Because that is going to be reduced and a lot of Abyssal NPCs do high amounts of thermal damage. So this is Trickle Arpins and Concord. Okay, go towards the Free Clone Bay. Gonna swap out my clone because I got pretty expensive clone in right now. Active module sitting over here. This is also a pretty quick ship. It goes 900 meters a second with its afterburner. Okay, so we've got no implants in. Min Metal Fury is what I'm calling this ship. <laughs> okay, and then I'll undock and we have to go to a system which is allowing us to do T4 bis without getting suspect. I do not want to go suspect doing this. We go to a 0 0.7 system, it should be alright. Morasi, we don't have any nearby. Okay, if we go to Ian Orsta, I think we can find one adjacent system. Orient, and uh, we don't want to go to 0 0.5 if we can help it, so we'll go back here. I think it's 0 0.6, 7 systems we can go to. Here's one. That's very far away. Why is it so far away? Alima. I know there's one directly adjacent to Jita. So we can try going to Jita. Move a line and that's the system. Okay, great. Let's go to the safe here. Okay, we're in the safe. Time to do a raging firestorm. Let's have our safety to green. Just in case I mistook the security status. Okay, so you just have to remember here, we're going purely in a budget style fit. It, is requiring a lot of piloting skills that I've not been doing this particular type of fit for a long time so I, I mean I may as well could fail as well and if I fail it doesn't mean that it doesn't work it could mean that I make a mistake as well let's go for Lucifer Tramiel and we want to overheat these if we can help it okay let's continue here go towards the transfer conduit or the buy adaptive it's just a bit difficult to track here Anyone got any instructors? Yep, yeah, that one. No, don't unnecessarily boost. Take out those Dremels. The Elite Lucifers do a lot of damage. The Ixion could be good to take out as well. Because he has uh, tracking instructors, and that's going to make it a little bit harder for us when it comes to these. Oh, we're taking a bit of overheat damage. That's not going to be good. We're going to have to do a little bit less overheat damage or overheat usage here. Just manage the shield boosters like this. There we go, Ixion down. Should be a little bit easier to take these little frigates out. And be a little bit careful on the reload here. Now it seems to be going a bit better. It could have been a lot worse if we were to have the Cinnabels though, and that's actually something that I didn't take into consideration. 
because they will do a ton more damage than these measly drain yields. I mean, we still had two shield boosters, so we could get more shield boosting, and we could also overheat more as well. And we could overheat the thermal hardener, but it won't make a big difference in the Cinderella or the Angel Wave, just because not a lot of them do thermal damage. We also got some warriors, actually, we could use. And the warriors maybe is not the best option for Firestorm, but I think it's good because they are very fast, good tracking, and also they've got shields, so you don't have to worry about them taking permanent damage as much as, say, a Hobgoblins. Hobgoblins are going to just take permanent damage the second they get hit, but these guys have got a bit of a tough shield to get through. Let's see if we can just get a volley here on that by adaptive. Ooh, nice. That's a really good rare drop. Always the T4 Firestorm amazes me. Let's boost up that shield. The autocans here have pretty good tracking. Okay, next room, let's go. Oh no, we reloaded that. Is there a way to like not have reload all on? Because that's not good. I have to never click on reload all. If we get a very difficult room now, it's not going to be a good time for us. We maybe should have waited a bit, but it's all right. 75 million is that's one fourth of our ship's value okay here charybdis need to go a little bit to the side do not want to get into charybdis's uh vision here okay null charges don't worry too much about that but we will take them out anyway after the webs though oh big big volleys there those two entanglers need to be destroyed very fast good thing here about the vagabond is it's a really fast ship so it's able to get under charybdis guns a bit quicker than your typical uh, destroyer or your typical cruise in the abyss have the drones help a little bit as well that can be good can maybe have them take out the bioadaptive oh we'll get a bit of newts hard newts could be good to keep our shield boost up here oh fully newted out so quickly good that we're able to shoot without any capacitor need to focus on getting that afterburn online shield boost shield boost oh come on now overheat that stuff overheat that as well just go completely perpendicular to this guy don't over rep please please <laughs> it is a very uh, difficult situation here yeah, we've got the afterburn. Nice. Okay, good. The afterburn is the best tank here. Okay, we need to go also perpendicular. I keep forgetting about that in the midst of everything. There we go. Good. And we stopped overheating. That's also good. Okay, it seems like tank has stabilized a bit. Great. Now we need to close it and crib this. They got a lot less uh, of these guys attacking us as well with the newts. That's great. Because our auto cannons don't require cap. But I think, yeah, that is a reason that. A, th a big reason that we're not able to resist newts like a typical ship would be is because we've not got any cap battery at all, at all so we're very susceptible to newts. Oof, this ship is really cool. Look at that. We just bossed through the Caribdis like that, fully newted out. No problem. Uh, I mean, it was. It did come a bit close to see that armor there, but still. Now for this one. What are the bonuses of the ship? It's got projectile rate of fire, fall off, and shield boosting. Didn't lose a drone, surprisingly. I was expecting to lose a drone. You not got Rex on the overview. I want to add Rex to the overview. So now at this point then it's completely safe, like Caribdis can't really hit us at all. Or about 2,500 maybe. Soon Caribdis is destroyed but we're getting out of range actually. I think we'll hopefully we'll be able to destroy Caribdis before we get out of range. Come on. Please. No. <laughs> yeah, okay, great. Okay, good. Recall those drones. I don't need to reload at all, we can just reload the Republic fleet. That was pretty quick as well. Under five minute average per room. <laughs> Economical ship we've got here. I wonder if you could also do a cheap variant for T5. I think it's difficult because you can't really bling the ancillary shield boosters the same way you can bling a 
normal shield, which there's not really much upgrade potential here. The main upgrade potential would be to have good implants and better resist mods. This is sort of the best you can get, I think, with this type. Oh, like close to the best you can get, not the best, but I, there's not as big of a margin to improve here compared to a typical abyss fit that I would use for T4. Okay, just a bunch of triglavians. So this should be an easy room here, as long as we don't get ganked in the end. <laughs> Okay, I would want to go for those Kikimoras first. Rodivas could also be good too because they're giving him a lot of remote reps. Yeah, probably actually is a good idea to go for Rodiva since he's also getting very close. How about drones engage that by adaptive? I really like the range on these auto cannons because they're able to hit almost everything here but still have good tracking. I like it. All the like, relevant NPCs like Triglavi seem to keep it all skirted just the range of uh, auto cannons. I really like it actually. Okay. We didn't grab any extraction nodes, but that's alright. Here we're mainly focused on surviving. Okay. When the ancillary shield booster's charge has ended, you can actually still use it, but it's a shield booster that requires so much capacitor. Oh no, we lost a drone. Oh, we lost a drone, that's unfortunate, but it doesn't really matter when you've earned so much back in terms of that armor plate mutoplasmid. Right, we're camp stable here, but we remove that cap charge to look 100 gigajoules in negative cap. Great. A successful T4 firestorm. If you guys have got any opinions of this fit, let me know in the comments down below if there are any improvements. Or if you've used this fit, what kind of experiences have you had? I think it's a really fun uh, fit because it's really under, like, under invested. Like, there's very little isk invested into this ship, but it gets a lot of punch from the value you've spent. Uh, I think that and being able to do T4 Firestorm in general is pretty difficult, and then you're able to do that with a ship that's worth so little. It's, uh, to me, it's amazing. You can do this. I mentioned before that there's little upgrade potential for the shield boosters. Uh, that's true, but there's also upgrade potential for the shield hardness. But another actually upgrade or quote unquote upgrade potential would be to use the gamma sites because the gamma sites give a little bit extra like shield build, uh, buffer capability. So could help a little bit in that regard, giving you like a bigger meteor shield. So that's it. Cheap T4 Vagabond really is great at doing the T4 abyss. Uh, we did have some close calls, but nothing it really couldn't handle we could have overheated more and we could also use boosters as well we could have brought some cheap boosters improving our shield boosting capabilities as well and to dock up here and repair but great that we got that really expensive armor plate here hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did enjoy the video or learned something new please leave a like and subscribe i'll catch you guys later